What's going on everybody and welcome back to a new video on the channel. This is an exciting video and it's really an exciting video because we've got so much to talk about. So much has happened over the last week or so for NC State Athletics. It's been an exciting and a successful week. First, we'll start off with NC State football. They they opened up this week, last Saturday, with a win against Syracuse to improve to 7-3. and three. It wasn't the prettiest of games, but NC State did, was able to pull out a win in the end. The offense was able to bounce back very nicely after a tough performance against Liberty a couple weeks ago. Offensively, they were led by the outstanding play of Thayer Thomas, nine catches, 102 yards, three touchdowns. And in the first half, it seemed like State's offense kind of staggered a little bit. They, they tried to build momentum, but it seemed like everything was going wrong, especially for Bailey Hockman. In the first half, he really, really struggled. And he had an interception. He fumbled through the back of the end zone. He had a 60-yard touchdown call back that he threw to Ricky Person. That he, they, said, or they said Ricky Person stepped out of bounds, which he did. That was called back. It just seemed like a tough first half. You see the interception right there. C.J. Riley was injured on that play, and it led to Syracuse led to a Syracuse field goal. And it wasn't it wasn't so much the Syracuse offense in the first half that got going. It was just they got so many breaks. They they had that kickoff return for a touchdown that kind of got their their scoring started. They were starting a third-string quarterback in Rex Culpepper. He didn't play terrible. He had some very, very dumb mistakes at the end of the game, you'll see. And even Bailey Hockman made a really, really poor decision when he threw the ball out of the back of the end zone, which caused State a safety. So Syracuse had a kickoff return for a touchdown. They capitalized off a of safety, off of great field position, off of interception. It was just NC State kind of shooting themselves in the foot in the first half, which caused them to be go into the halftime trailing 23-14. to 14. And that right there was that long touchdown pass from Culpepper, really his best throw of the afternoon. And then the second half was when State really locked in on offense. Bailey Hockman come out throwing the ball. And even at halftime, I was wondering, would they go to Ben Finley at some point? Because Hockman just didn't seem to have it. And then he just started, he said, I'm going to lock in on Thera Thomas. And he gave him chances to make plays. And Thera Thomas made pretty much every play possible in the second half. A beautiful catch right there. Great, great, just great throw by Bailey Hockman, putting in position, position for Thera Thomas to make the catch. And he came down with it. State did allow... Syracuse to come down the field and score a touchdown. Syracuse could not get the run game going at all. They had three total yards rushing in the in the whole game as a team. We have to give our defense some credit. They were put in some tough situations in the first half, and they only allowed seven points in the whole second half. Coming into this game, I figured that Syracuse offense would struggle, but I didn't expect NC State to help them out as much as they did. Is that another beautiful one-on-one -on -one catch by Amezi. Hockman put it right where it needed to be, and Amezi came down with it for the touchdown. And Mezzi, he had just four catches, but that was a big one right there. Of course, Thayer Thomas led the way. And on the ground, State didn't even reach 100 yards on the ground. It was just mainly that passing attack in the second half that pulled out the win for NC State. And here was that final drive on that on that last drive, Cole, uh, Cole Pepper dropping back to pass, just trying to buy some time, looking for somebody open. And he takes the sack there with no timeouts left, and now it's fourth down. You think you can't spike it, and you have a chance to run one more play. They try to hurry up to the line. They get the snap off with one second left, but Cole Pepper actually spikes the ball. And it's, it's something totally NC State would do. It's funny to see it happen to somebody else, even though I kind of feel bad for them. But either, anyway, it's a win for State, 36-29. to We'll take it and improve to 7-3 and three, and a huge opportunity to close out the regular season on, on Saturday to go to 8-3 and three against Georgia Tech. To this win, State tied for fourth in the ACC with North Carolina. And the State was able to hold on to that Miami game a few weeks ago. They had a double-digit lead late in that game. If they were able to hold on, they would be third in the ACC behind the two powerhouses, Notre Dame and Clemson. But fourth is still very, very impressive for the season we've had. Losing Devin Leary and coming off with the season we had last year, it's definitely impressive, and, and it's a nice bounce-back season. So you have to give Coach Dorn and the staff a lot of credit for getting the guys prepared. And no matter who was on the schedule, it may not be as hard as you years past but they took advantage of it and they played they have played some tough teams and they've won some tough games so you have to give this team a lot of credit before we preview the tomorrow's game against Georgia Tech, we have to talk about NC State, both men and women's basketball. They've had both great starts to the season and definitely something that Wolfpack fans should be excited for and excited to see where both seasons go. For first talk about the men, they had a game, their second game of the season last Friday against North Florida, an impressive win by 35 points. And it, again, it was somebody different. It was Devin Daniels in game one who led the team in scoring. Jericho Helms got the start, and he led the team in scoring with 17. Mandy Bates added 10. DJ Funderburg in double digits as well with 11. And Cam Hayes, the freshman off the bench with 13. And most of the freshmen have been seeing solid playing time over these first few games of the season, and that's really, really good to see them getting in and getting a feel for the college game. 
I touched on it in my last video about how deep this team is and how Coach Keats loves how he how he has such a deep team this year and it's by far as deep as that he's had since he's been at NC State, this being his fourth year, and how much of an advantage is it when you have such a deep team and have multiple guys that can beat you and multiple guys that can score double digits on any given night. Like Jericho Helms, who had back-to-back 17-point -back games this week, first against North Florida and then last night against UMass Lowell in the 31-point blowout win for State. And that's three straight 30-point wins for the Wolfpack to start the season. Their schedule will get a little bit harder as they'll go. They'll play UConn, and another undefeated team. And they'll play also at Michigan in a, in a few days with the ACC Big Ten Challenge. So things get tougher. These three games were definitely important for State. And after losing that William & Mary game to the cancellation, it was good to find another opponent. And this, you know, this team won in three on the season. But you have to kind of look at that one win. It was against a team that did beat Virginia. So we'll take that for what it's worth. But State come out an impressive performance again. Multiple guys in double figures. And that's what that's what NC State is going to be this year. Most people probably say DJ Funderburg will be the best player for the pack this year. And this very well could be the case. But they're going to be different games when different stars shine for NC State. One game it might be Devin Daniels. Another game it might be DJ it may be Manny, maybe Helms, Braxton Beverly will definitely have his games where he goes off. Cam Hayes, I would not be surprised about him. And be, keep on the lookout, Darion Sebron. He's a, a freshman that registered last year. He has really impressed me over the last, over these three games. Starts. We cannot go without mentioning the women's basketball team and their outstanding win last night against number one ranked South Carolina. South Carolina, obviously undisputed number one team in college basketball were the favorites last year were likely the favorites coming in this year and nc state went in there went into columbia and got a win and snapped their 29 game winning streak so shout out to coach Wes Moore and this team nc state is without a doubt a contender for not only the only the acc and to go back to back but also to make a run in march and win national title so don't be surprised if you see the wolfpack playing in the final four for the women's team this year coach keats and Coach Moore have definitely given NC State fans some some life in the basketball and given us a lot of hope for the future. And the girls' team, they've shown it last year and continued it this year that they are contenders. And the Wolfpack men's team, they have ways to go, but they are building. Coach Keats is building, and we have a lot to look forward to in the future. So get it, get ready, Wolfpack Nation. Now switching back over to football, another thing the state fans should be excited for as we preview Saturday's game against Georgia Tech, tomorrow's game against Georgia Tech. The Wolfpack taking on a Georgia Tech team that has struggled 3-5 and five on the season. State did lose to the Yellow Jackets last year in a close game in Atlanta. Both teams last year struggled, of course. State, we know their struggles, but this year State has really turned things around. And they play a Georgia Tech team that is very beatable and is, is going to be tough. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, as you've seen last week against Syracuse. They had to fight for that win. That I figured should have been a lot easier than it was. The state will have a home game senior day. And you know they'll go, want to go out on top for the seniors. And a chance to the end of this regular season, 8-3. and three, You would have thought that for state this year. Georgia Tech is known for giving up a lot of points so far this year. They've given up 44 times, and they've only played eight games. So they've given up 40 in half of their games. They gave up that 73-point spot to Clemson a few weeks ago. They've had a couple games canceled. They, they've also played a tough schedule. They had number 14 UCF earlier in the season. They played Clemson, Notre Dame. They also have Miami coming up in a little in a few weeks. They played Boston College. It was no no slouch at all. They've had a solid season. So they've had a tough schedule. They also played Pitt. We know that's not an easy game, as you've seen from our game against them. So they've had a tough schedule. So we'll back have to be mindful of that. And this is a Georgia Tech team that's there's a lot to play for. State, this is their last game of the regular season, but Georgia Tech still has three games left on their schedule. And they want to finish up potentially above 500 if they get the chance and if they win out. So we'll see how State goes into this game. With it being senior day, a lot of emotions – can they stay focused? Can they get an important win? And how how sweet would it be state to finish this regular season eight and three, and potentially have not only a winning record in conference, but be a uh, finish fourth in the conference? That would be a, it's an outstanding season for Coach Dorn and the staff to build on next year, and hopefully a, a normal season next year. It also obviously has a lot of bowl implications. I haven't looked at any bowl projections for state, but I figure, you know, at eight and three, you probably play in a decent bowl against maybe an SEC team or a Big Twelve team, Big Ten team. We'll see. Should not be. It should be a solid bowl game if we can end the season off eight and three. Much as the Yellow Jackets defense likes to give up points, their offense can score it at a high level at times. They had fifty. 
five, I believe, last week against Duke in the win. So they are capable of scoring. They have a solid freshman quarterback in Jeff Sims. He's got 11 touchdowns in the air through the season and four on the ground. So he's a capable – another one of those dual-threat guys that State has struggled with in the past, but we've seen in their last game against one of those dual-threat guys – and Malik Willis, they really made things tough on him. So hopefully they can continue that, make things tough on Sims in the offense. Saturday, if you're a Wolfpack fan, it's definitely a day to look forward to. Yeah, basketball in the morning, the Wolfpack taking on UConn, the, the men's team. Then you have the Wolfpack senior day taking on Georgia Tech, trying to fin- finish off the season 8-3. and three. Now for the prediction time. Thought about this one for a little bit, and I'm fairly confident. Last week, uh, I got the, I got NC State winning right, but I kind of underestimated the, the Syracuse offense. But you know, a win's a win. We'll take it. This week, I'm going to go 34 to 21 Wolfpack win over Georgia Tech to end the regular season eight and three, end it on a solid note, and get a solid win. We'll see what happens. I may be underestimating Wolfpack's offense. Hopefully, I am. Hopefully, we can run up the score once again, like we did last week. We'll see what happens. I hope we can pull out a solid win and finish off this solid regular season. I believe that'll do it, Wolfpack Nation. A lot to cover this week over multiple sports. A lot of things happening in basketball season getting underway, football season kind of coming to an end, but still some exciting things happening. I may have to end up making two videos a week if things continue to be this exciting. A lot of good times coming ahead for Wolfpack Athletics. So make sure you tune in Saturday for some great games basketball football hopefully state can continue this hot streak they've had of winning which has really been exciting to see both programs or all programs really being successful over the past few months or so so hopefully we can continue winning continue the winning culture at nc state and if you did enjoy this video make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new i appreciate everybody for watching and as always go back